But hallelujah. That's how I feel down inside. And I'm going to tell you how God gave me this message. Brother Larry gave me a CD. And I went and put it in the van. I like to listen to music while I drive. Do you guys like to do that? Well, it come across this song. Hallelujah, I'm going down the road and it's telling me my God can do anything. And I had a little shouting spell. Now, don't say nothing. Hey, there's people that text and drive. I was just shouting and driving, okay? But let me tell you, I felt the presence of the Lord and God spoke to me. He said, I want you to preach that. And I don't never know when I'm going to preach, but I just knew he said it. Well, here's a habit that I have. Once God gives me a message... I go straight to Pastor Marcus, and I say, Pastor Marcus, and here's what I went to. I said, Pastor Marcus, God gave me a message, and the, and the title of it is, My God Can Do Anything. God gave me that message, not you, so don't you preach it, okay? I do it every time, God, I do it every time. So what does he do? Sunday. August 25th, I, no, no, excuse me, so 18th, Pastor Marcus gets up here and preaches. I mean, he has some of the same scriptures and says some of the same words that I already had written down. <laughs> and I thought to myself, but he gave it another title. It didn't have the same title, so that's how he thought he got by with it. Well, it didn't stop there. On the 25th that I said first, but the 25th, we come to our empowerment service and the great Reverend Robin Angle got up and preached it too. <laughs> Except she used another title. And I said, God, I know you're going to change this message and give me something else. Okay, what is it? Come on, I'm waiting. Nothing will come, nothing will come. I said, God, it's getting close. Come on, I need to finish this up. He didn't change it. But you know what he did say? And Kathy just said it. God didn't change this message because there's something that God is telling our church. He is telling us something, and it's up to us to receive it. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We read this scripture. Man, we get up in places and we quote this scripture and we love it. But let me ask this question. Do we believe it and do we apply it? We can say it, but if we're not believing it and applying it, what good is it doing? Well, let me tell you what. My little grandson... Elon, who was six years old, he believed it. And I'm going to tell you the conversation that he had with his mom, okay? So Elon goes to his mommy, which is my daughter Carrie, and he says, Mommy, I can lift up this whole house. And he's smiling real big. And my daughter Carrie, his mom, says, um, Elon, this house is really heavy, so, you know, I don't think that you're going to be able to lift it up. And you know what his reply was? Well, Jesus can, and he lives inside of me, so yes, I can. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, six years old. Hallelujah. Faith, believing that God can do exceedingly, abundantly above what you ask or think. My daughter posted that on Facebook. I don't know if any of you saw it, but she did post it on Facebook. And here was one of the replies that came back. Yes, that kid knows who the real superhero is. Amen. How many of you have ever heard that? It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. This is a picture of my son, Catlin, when he was a little boy. Now, I want you to look at him. He believed in his heart, yes. He believed truly in his heart that he was Superman. Now, I know you're saying that doesn't quite look like Superman. He made up his own outfits, okay? Now, there he's sitting with a hat, his glasses. I don't know if you can see he's got gloves on. He usually had a backpack on him. 
I told Mikey this was the Mexican version of Superman. But he really believed he was Superman. And you mothers that have boys know how active they are anyway. And he thought he could jump off of everything. And he tried to jump off of everything. He really believed in his heart that he was Superman. I'm surprised he's still here today with all the things that he jumped off and down. But he believed that in his heart, that he was really Superman. You know, a lot of people think that Superman was the first superhero. But actually, Jesus is the original and he's the only superhero that there is. Hallelujah. Jesus is more powerful, the most powerful being in this whole universe. He has no weakness. There is nothing that can stop him. You know, you think about the superhero. They say, you know, that he could leap over um, tall buildings. That he can run faster than a speeding bullet. How many of you have heard that? You know what our God can do? Listen to this. We just talked, saying about it. He could feed 5,000 people. 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Our God can do that. He can heal those who are sick. And not only can he do that, he can even raise the dead. He can raise the dead. Think about that. And then we wonder, and then we think that our God can't do anything? Yes, He can. He sent me to tell us that, that God can do anything. And here's the definition of the word anything anything slash whatever. Any such thing, in any way at all, in any way. He can make a way out of no way. He can turn your darkness into day. He said to tell you, my God can do anything. And it's time for us to realize, church, that we serve a huge God. A God that is, we, we put limits on him and we shouldn't do that. We need to quit putting him in a box and saying, well, God, you can do this. But this may be a little too hard for you. There is nothing impossible with the God that we serve. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? I don't know why everything doesn't work out the way that we want it to, but I'm here to tell you our God doesn't make mistakes either. He knows what he's doing. There are going to be some things, Kathy, we may not understand here on this earth. It might be till we get to heaven that we have the divine revelation. But let me tell you, God does not make mistakes. Hallelujah. He's an awesome and a mighty God. For those of you that were here on August the 25th, there was a message and an interpretation given out by the Holy Spirit, and it was a reminder. It wasn't something that we have not heard. It was a reminder because you know what he said? The Holy Spirit spoke to us and said, the days of miracles are not over. How many of you remember that? He was reminding us because he said it, Probably about a year ago. I've got it wrote down. I'm not sure. But probably about a year ago. And he reminded us. The same God that is working miracles, that worked miracles in this Bible, is the same God that is working miracles today. Hallelujah. One of the big reasons we don't see miracles today, one of the reasons, not all the reasons, Too many times we concentrate on how big our problem is. We do. We concentrate on how big our problem is. And we tell everybody how big it is and how this and this and this and this. You know what we forgot to concentrate on? How big our God is. How big our God is. Our God can do anything. Anything, And I know some of you are sitting there saying, but you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've gone through. And you're right. I may not have walked where some of you have walked. But God can still do anything. In 1 Kings 8 and 27, it says, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? 
Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. The heavens of heaven cannot contain him. That's how awesome that our God is. But so many times we don't put our faith and our trust in him. And when things don't go our way, we get mad and we get angry. We get disappointed and feel like God has, has, has just left us there. He's not. No, he hasn't. I think one of the reasons that God is reminding us that the days of miracles are not over, there are miracles sitting right here in our church now I can't name every one of them and I'm not showing partiality okay I'm just telling you the ones that were given to me Alice East is a miracle Donna East is a miracle Sherry O'Dell is a miracle Pat Palmer is a miracle Miss Mary Harrison is a miracle they may not be sitting here today with us, but I tell you what, if it wasn't for God, they wouldn't be here. Amen? We need to remember that there are miracles right among us. We need to praise the Lord that the days of miracles are not over. We need to open up that box and say, God, you be God. I'm putting my faith and my trust in you. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, But it is written, Eye has not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Think about that. You are his son. You are his daughter. You are his child. All you mothers and fathers out there know how much you care about your children, correct? And sometimes do you do things not to be mean to them, but just to teach them something. Amen? Ever done that? Sometimes God's teaching us something. Amen? He is. But let me tell you, he's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. It's time that we realize that the God that we serve can do anything. The other Saturday, it was last Saturday, Jack and I were at the mall. And my sister, who doesn't profess to know the Lord as her Savior, she um, called me. And Jack was in Dick's Sporting Goods, getting ready to go on his fishing trip, buying all... Can I ask y'all a question? Just throw this in there while I'm doing this. How does a fish know the difference between one rod and another? Just asking. Think about it. But anyway, we were in Dick's Sporting Good, and um, my sister called, and she said, Joni, she said, I need prayer. She said, now, you might not, this is not one of them big, huge things, but listen, okay? She said, we're, uh, me and Jimmy are in the airport. We just got out, well, they were going to Santa Fe. They were in Texas. They just got off the plane, and they were, uh, Jimmy lost his wallet, and he could not find it. They would not let him get back on the plane and look for it. She said, I don't know what we're going to do. She said, will you please pray? I said, yes, I will. So I leave Dick Sporting Good, and I go out there in the hall, and there's this officer walking up and down, and I thought, if he sees me up here walking around praying, he's going to wonder what in the world is happening here. But I did. I went and I prayed. I said, God, you know where that wallet is. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to meet this need. I went about my business and I didn't hear my phone ring and she called later, not too long after that and left a message. Joni, I just want to let you know we found the wallet. Thank you for praying. Hallelujah. Yes. That's, that's not a, a huge thing, but my God can do anything. It doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter how small it is. It's important to God. I'm going to tell you another story. And I'm going to end with this story. I'm going to ask the musicians if they would to come on back. 
But before I do this and end with this, I just want to tell something really quick to tell you how good that God is, that God can do anything. It's about my little grandson, baby Sawyer. And I told this on a Wednesday night, but I want to share it this morning. I did not know some things. I did not know that sometimes uh, it was well, in the state of Virginia that if you have like Down syndrome or a physical, something wrong with you physically, if you needed a transplant, you're last on the list. You're last on, Gail's shaking her head, you're last on the list. So my daughter-in-law went to our congressman and talk to them about this issue. They're gonna vote on it in January. They're gonna vote on it in January. If this law was passed, Down syndrome and people with physical illnesses are gonna be on that list to get transplants. Amen. Amen, can we give God some praise? You tell me God can't do anything? And you know what the name of the law is gonna be? Sawyer's Law. Let's see. Amen. God took a little disabled boy that they tried to get her to abort. And you tell me, our God can do anything. And how he chooses to do it is up to him. Amen. Amen. Donnie, y'all go ahead and play if you don't mind. It was back in 2001. It was been December. And I was at the Radford Church of God of Prophecy and I was preaching. They were having revival and it started early. And it was about 7.20 and service was over and I was just standing there talking. And um, about 7.30, Jack had been here to an elders meeting. About 7.30, he shows up at the church. And I wasn't expecting him to come. And I said, what are you doing here? He said... I need to talk to you. And I said, what? My son, Catlin, and Carrie, my daughter, they were on their way to Fairlawn to the Christmas program, and they were in a wreck. And Jack said, we got to get over to the hospital quick. And I said, okay. So we went over to the hospital, and there my son, Catlin, he was strapped down on the table, and he had hurt his wrist and his shoulder, and went to the other room to see my daughter, Carrie, and she had bruises all over her head, and her knee was just having a terrible time and bruises on her hips and they were just laying there and we were going from room to room trying to, you know, how that is when something like that happens. And the doctor comes into the room and he looks at me and Jack and he says, well, at first he looks at Carrie, my daughter, then he looks at us, but he looked at her and he said, if you and your brother had not a hat on your seatbelts, you would be dead right now both of you. Well, we all started crying. The kids did get to go home. Catlin had broke his collarbone and fractured his wrist and Carrie had just bumps and bruises all over her and had to leave out on crutches. And we come home and that Wednesday night, they wanted to come back to church. And I said, okay, if you feel like you're able, we'll go back to church. And they went to the youth service. And that night, uh, Jeff Mitchell, who was the youth minister at that time, said he'd been praying about this accident and he said I'm going to tell you what God told me and I've kept this all these years this is what he said the devil meant for this accident to be a lot worse than it was with more injuries possible and even to try to take your life but God would not allow it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My children are here today because my God can do anything. And each one of you sitting out there, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you know what? It's time we as Christians, and that doesn't mean bad things aren't going to come our way. Amen? And sometimes death comes in our family and we don't understand why. We don't understand why. But God don't make mistakes. And our God can do anything. Fathers, we come before you in prayer today. You saw those hands that were raised. 
And God, I know that you're looking at their hearts. And they raise their hands, God, because they want the right relationship with you. And God, I don't know what's going on in their lives, but you do. And I pray, God, this morning that you would touch them. I pray, God, for your amazing grace that they would know, Lord, and feel in their hearts that their relationship with you is right. And, God, that you would direct their paths and that you would show them your way. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. And we're so thankful that we serve the God that can do anything. Nothing is impossible with you. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here together. Let us apply this word to our heart, Lord. And go with us as we leave this sanctuary, Lord. May we be strong in our faith. May we realize that we serve a huge and a big God. We ask this in the name of Jesus. And all of his children said, amen and amen.